Hello guys, welcome back to Pause and welcome to part 9 of Hysteria Pier. This is our Planet Coaster Vintage Pack build where we are building a promenade and a pier of a fictional seaside town built in our world of Hysteria. So this Hysteria um, pier is owned by the same company that operates Hysteria um, Valley which is our other theme park build here on the channel which we are going to get back into as soon as we are finished this pier. Um, so though that is a kind of tedious storyline, let's link in these two projects. So before we get into what we're doing today, as always, if this is the kind of content that you like, simulation games, theme parks, planet coaster, then please uh, sub please consider subscribing to the channel. Can't get my words out today. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a massive like down below. Um, so what are we doing today? So a fair bit actually, and we're a little bit here, there, and everywhere. So. Let's start with what we're doing at the moment on screen. So we are doing a little bit of work on the uh, coaster station for the Wild Mouse. Um, now I don't do anything too spectacular with this station. Um, and I did check out quite a few reference images of um, coasters on piers from around the world. And they generally are quite open. Um, so a lot of beams, a bit of roofing, uh, and they, they tend to be quite high off the floor, which is why I, I did make this uh, station a little bit higher um, than ground level. Um, so that's what we do really, is make a very open station using some of the new vintage uh, pieces, like these archways, uh, which just look really nice, naturally. And the colour scheme works really well with the sign above and the actual ride colour. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't sure what to do with the actual coaster colour whether to keep it this red and yellow um, but now I've kind of gone with that theme of the ride I think it does fit even though it is the default I might tone the colours down slightly to give it a kind of hint towards a, like a, a sun washed kind of look uh, as these kind of pier rides would get uh, sort of bleached out in the sun and obviously they are they've been here many years so I think I might tone the colours down slightly but I think I will keep them the sort of classic um, red and yellow that's the plan so I'm just checking the archer just there to make sure the scale is right for the roof because I don't want to make it too high, too low and just want to keep everything um, as scaled as possible. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing we do. Uh, very very easy, simple little station building. Uh, nothing too spectacular. I had a bit of trouble with these paths trying to figure out how to actually sort that out uh, as I do need to leave a little bit of space. Uh, as again, thank you guys for your comments on the last video. Um, I am going to put the kind of pub restaurant bar type thing to the right of the uh, Wild Mouse coaster uh, and I think I will extend the pier out slightly just to fit that in uh, and we might put a little seating area either to the side or to the back of the coaster uh, but it probably be to the side as I, I don't want there to be too much behind uh, as that's not very realistic really this, this coaster would cap off the end of the pier uh, and that's the kind of uh, plan that we're going for um, so we don't start the pub in this episode that will be something uh, maybe next time down the line uh, but we do a fair bit today a good chunk so not only do we finish off this station we put in uh, a little bit of th light theming um, a very light theming I must stress um, if you want to see some proper detail fill it theming um, head over to our other projects like the studios park or hysteria valley um, we do some actual real proper building in those parks um, so if this is the first sort of uh, project here on this channel that you followed um, Bear in mind, this is very much meant to be a janky pier in the UK. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with UK piers, they are pretty naff. Um, so that's why this build is not the most detailed. Um, but we do have the stuff on the channel that is. So just want to make that very clear to anybody who's just found this and thinking, this guy's a bit rubbish, his builds are crap. Um, this build is very different to anything I've ever done in the game. Um, so I wouldn't take this as an example of my sort of general work. So check out the other stuff if you... If you have a bit of time and uh, inclined to do so um, so anyway back to today so I just put a little bit of capping off down the bottom of the station here just to give it a bit of a foundation um, again these kind of pier rides um, would be a very temporary build so they'd sort of just stick a very temporary structure and maybe a, a foundation base and just build on top of that um, very very temporary stuff they can rip down swap out every now and again uh, and that is just how they, work, how they kind of work um, so a, bit, a little bit of fencing around the ride uh, and this is where we start on um, very light theming theming in inverted commas here it, it's nothing spectacular um, we put in a fake cheese wedge which is just some like cheap naff bit of fiberglass fiberglass like theming piece that I'll have probably found in a bin somewhere 
Um, so that we stick that in the front and then just a little cart that's got a cheese on it and some bread. That's it. That is the theming for the ride. Uh, they don't have much. I mean, these kind of things. This this is probably even too much theming for a pier. Uh, but I wanted them to be just something, some kind of little set piece. So this this would be their main attraction. Um, so yeah, I just put a little bit of that in, <laughs> cheese and uh, a cart. Um, you'll notice I keep saving a lot. I'm having the dreaded Planet Coaster crash quite often at the moment, mainly in my studios park, um, but it, it does keep happening. So. Uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of saving going on, just to make sure. As I keep losing uh, a lot of work, so I need to keep saving. Um, here, I was trying, just trying a few, trying to play around with a few bits to make a little entrance plaza, or well, an entrance archway, I should say. Um, I get rid of these yellow things in the end. I was trying to make something look, um, well, cheesy. It was the plan. That's why I used the yellow. Uh, but I think they just look a bit awful. So they, they go, and we just end up keeping the sign. Um, I wanted to keep the actual sign very, um, uh, I keep using the, the, the word NAF um, as obviously the main sign is on the coaster itself so I didn't want to detract from that too much. Um, I do change it up, I get rid of that plank and we do put an actual pop sign in a second uh, but again it's very much just a standard sign, we don't want to do anything too special. Um, here I'm just starting a little bit of the realism side of things, so uh, I'm using a lot of the chain link, well I say a lot of, I only do this side, um, but we are using the chain link here as, as, again, looking at reference images, it's the kind of thing you would get on these kind of piers, uh, and again with sort of ride area, no entry kind of signs that we put on there. Again, just a little sense of realism, I want to keep the uh, an element of realism in the build as we do in Hysteria Valley, so I want to make sure there's that little tie together. Um, like I said, very standard sign, um, just wanted to put something there so you know exactly where the entrance is, as it is the sort of main event. Uh, and then we start putting in some of the kind of uh, facility pieces, I say facility, um, the, again the little realistic touches. So we put in a little screen that houses um, the tokens, and how many tokens the ride would take, as that obviously is how we're going for it on this pier, it's a paper ride kind of pier, uh, where you'll buy tokens. Uh, and that's just what we do here. I just edited the sign I used a few weeks ago, uh, well, a few episodes ago, I should say. Um, and yeah, we stick that in. Um, so that's about it for the work we do on the coaster today. Um, it's pretty much done now, I'd say, the coaster. I mean, other than a few little bits underneath, I want to put uh, a bit more in with the foundations to make that look a bit more temporary uh, and a bit more of the fencing. Uh, and again, like I said, I probably will adjust the colours. Um, so let's move on to what we're doing now. So um, I've been teasing this little ticket booth thing for a while um, so I thought let's get started on it so we build a little building here just to again using a lot of the vintage pieces these wooden bases do go in a minute I don't like them I don't know why I even used them in the first place I was just trying something new I don't like it, it doesn't match so they go uh, and then we end up using mainly vintage pieces to make this look quite nice uh, and they use a lot of the um, I don't know what they call actually I think they, they call them a vinyl in the actual game uh, but those new like square vintage posters which are like a, a wall size we sort of cover the outside with them and they look really good actually um, in this kind of thing as it would be a centre building um, it, it works quite well as a kind of looks very vintage and it could be just old pictures from old rides on the pier um, so yeah it's really good um, it's a shame they haven't made one of that size that is a billboard um, I mean I haven't checked if the billboards are the same size though I don't think they are uh, but it's a shame they haven't made that because we could have actually took some pictures of the pier and sort of vintage them up. Uh, but it's still something we could do down the line using some billboards. Um, I'm trying not to use as many though in this because it, obviously this will end up on the workshop at some point. As a few people have asked. So I'm trying to tone down the use of billboards as much as I can because they're a bit of a faff when you put them on the workshop because you've got to upload them separately and it just becomes a bit of a pain. So. But we'll see. I mean, they work quite well. I'm quite happy with it. Um, it's a bit high, the building. I, I probably could have made it a little bit lower, uh, as it does kind of ruin, not ruin, but it kind of takes away the sightline of the, the Wild Mouse sign when you're walking in. Uh, but that's just the way I did the path in. Um, but I think it works. I mean, it, it needs to be a certain height to fit the building in, uh, but I could have made the roof a little bit lower. But it works for what it is. Um, in terms of the path, I do quite a lot actually with the path in a couple of minutes, so you'll see that towards the end of the video. Um, but I basically open a lot of the rides. I wanted to see how the guest flow worked because um, I, I sort of already planned and envisioned that there's going to be a few 
bottleneck areas is there's quite a lot of thin pathways and there's only one real main path that runs up and down the pier um, so in hindsight I probably should have made that a bit wider um, but that's why I tested it so I opened up a lot of the rides got all the guests in um, and yeah it gets it gets a bit hectic to be fair so I make a, quite a few alterations on the path and move a few queue lines around um, and generally just put some more open areas now you'll see it looks quite messy towards the end of the video um, but as I must stress and I have mentioned before my plan at the end of this is to lift the entire platform of the pier up slightly um, or put a new platform on I haven't decided either way I'm gonna do it yet uh, but the curbs of the path are going to be invisible basically I'm gonna cover those up so you're not gonna see the exact roots of the path you'll see the queue lines because I'm using fences but the actual pathways you aren't gonna see um, so it's only this high for now so we can actually see where we go and make sure they actually line up um, but that's why it looks a bit messy at the moment but by the end that will all be smoothed over do not worry so these are the pieces I was talking about these little um, vinyl signs I think they work really well on this building they fit perfectly with the height um, and and some of these popcorn lighting to the side as well it makes it look really good um, and it suits I think it suits the area really well and I'm happy with how it turned out um, for such a simple building, I think it does look quite good and it does stand out uh, and that's the an the angle I wanted to go for is it's not going to be an over the top style building, it's just a ticket booth but I did want it to match the sort of general architecture of the rest of the pier. So that's what we've done there, put that one in. Um, again, just very light vintage theming on the side and the back just to make it fit really and this is where I was checking the sight lines, like I say it does ruin the view ever so slightly of the Wild Mouse coaster. Um, but it's all good, don't worry, it's all good. <laughs> um, it, it'll be fine once we get everything else in and we'll get some more little buildings down the side. As, as we do need some more shops and things, um, it'll all come together quite nicely. So this is where I start putting in some of the queue lines and I did notice that the exit of this ride was still tucked away around the back. Um, so we've just moved that into the front, make sure that's uh, all usable. Um, we do a little bit of work here, what I do is, I, I can't fit a ride in this footprint so to get just people going into the building um, to, for the fun house, I just put some shops in there basically, just so people will wander up and down. We put a fake ticket booth in just near the entrance, again to give it a slightly a bit, bit, a little bit of realism. Uh, and instead of using one of the people, I just use a studio's animatronic. Um, she looks like she knows what she's doing. So yep, she's operating this fun house. So there we go. <laughs> so that's what we do. Um, at first, I wanted this nice straight entrance with the, the lights. That doesn't stay, uh, as the, like I said, this area is the main bottleneck once we get all these people in. As you can see already, we've only opened two rides and they're piling on the pier. So uh, at first, I was going to make this area a little seating plaza, um, but then I sort of open it up a little bit more to make another uh, through route of the path because that, that is the problem we've got is it's just one very thin path that runs up the center so it just makes everything go a bit mental uh, the other thing i do as well i do cap the guests at a thousand uh, because at one point we get almost two thousand on here uh, and yeah it just gets a little bit hectic uh, to be fair once everything's open and we open everything on the actual promenade as well I think naturally the guests will disperse out a little bit more. I think it's just the AI in this game. As soon as you open a ride, everyone floods to it. Um, so it did just cause, as you can see there, a bit of pandemonium in terms of the pathing. Um, so yeah, we do a few alterations, uh, move some paths around just to give the uh, just the guests another route of getting from A to B. Um, and I think, it, it, like I say, it looks messy towards the end, um, but function functionally it works. Um, so that's pretty much what we do. Um, so the last thing we do today in terms of the actual rides is we get started on the ghost train and that's what you'll see in a couple of seconds. Uh, so I start putting in the track so by the end of this video the the entire trackway is in uh, and I've, I've based the track very loosely on Blackpool Pleasure Beach's ghost train uh, and a few other sort of classic ghost trains that you'll find around the world um, and I've gone for the the very classic style of ghost train where you start on the lower level you go up a slight lift hill and then there is a drop behind the station and that's what i'm going to go for so the station and the drop are going to be sort of open as one entrance area and you'll see that from the queue line uh, and then the rest of the ride is going to be inside with uh, with theming and i am going to do um, a themed interior on this ride don't expect anything to the scale of some of the other indoor dark rides we've done on the channel 
um, like some of the stuff in Studios Park. It's not going to be that level. This is going to be very sort of cheap jump scares, loud noises, flashing lights. Using some in-game pieces, I might use a few billboards in this. This is probably where a lot of the billboards will be, to be fair, um, with sort of random ghosty faces and stuff. Um, it all depends how they look in the, in the ride. If they, if they look a bit rubbish, I might not do billboards, but we'll see. Um, so as you can see, this is, like I say, in the layout of the ride. Um, the only bit of this track you will see from anywhere other than inside the ride itself, it, like I say, is just the drop and the station. Um, everything else is going to be behind walls and inside in dark and it will be a dark ride um, there'll be a couple of scenes on the upper section mainly that flat there where the rides are going now into the drop uh, but then a lot of the sort of jump scary bits will be down on this bottom level before you come round back past the track and into the station so it's not the longest ghost train in the world but then these kind of pier rides wouldn't be um, I'm basing this very much off like I've said a Blackpool Pleasure Beach ghost train and a fairground ghost train so that's what i'm going for so that's about it for today's video guys in the next episode we're going to continue on with some of the theming of this ghost train uh, we'll get the indoor started and just generally get um, the pier looking a bit more finished so we'll add a few fences um, a few amenities and a couple of little usable buildings and just to generally get this place looking a little bit more like a pier and less like a lot of crap path and some ride pong down so it's all going to start coming together now as we get into the end of this pier build I've still got a little bit more work left to do on the promenade so it's getting to the end guys i mean it might be a bit more than 10 episodes like i planned but it's going to take as long as it takes so i hope you've enjoyed this so far if you have don't forget to give us a like down below subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our content and if you've got any suggestions for this build or anything else here on pause games don't forget to drop them down below and i'll try and answer every single one so for now guys that is it for today um, check out the experience video that's coming out just after this one which will just show a little bit of um, what we've done today in a bit more detail it's not that much to be fair um, but it's just a nice little little bits of shots and glamour shots with some music um, so that'll be out just after after this video so that's it for today guys thank you ever so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one thank you guys bye